Please note that all facts and figures on the slides in this presentation are based on sources listed at the bottom of each slide. There is also a complete list of sources at the end of the show. We encourage you to look them up yourself to verify what we have presented here. Health care reform, can we make it happen? Can we really have significant positive reform of our health care system? Yes, we can. There is definitely a cure for a critically ill health care system. But first, let's look at the major problems and their underlying causes. Right now, costs are skyrocketing. The health insurance industry rakes in billions in profits every year, while millions are denied coverage or services. Well, I agree that our system has some problems, but I'm afraid of any major changes. So far, every change has ended up costing more while covering less. That's true. So I can understand why a lot of people are afraid of any change. Tell me, are you insured now? Yes, I am, and my plan is pretty good compared to others. And I really like my doctor. Okay, here's a list of things that are happening to people around us every day. Could any of these happen to you? Yeah, I guess any of them could happen to me. I try not to think about it, but you're right, I should. If I did have to find a different plan, I'm not at all sure I could afford it. And I read recently that the cost of health insurance and all health care is just going to continue going up. Is that true? Funny you should ask. I just happen to have a chart handy. Over the last 30 years, our gross domestic product, adjusted for inflation, increased by a factor of 14, while for the cost of health care, it's a factor of 33, more than double our GDP increase. And pharmaceuticals are even worse. We spend 55 times as much as we did in 1970 for drugs alone. The cost of premiums alone is projected to reach $80,000 in 2024. But wait a minute. That's the amount projected for the entire income of the average household in 2024. Exactly. So it'll require your entire paycheck just to pay your insurance premiums. Wow. And that's less than 15 years from now. Uh-huh. So, even if you're lucky enough to be able to afford this, what about your kids and grandkids? Will they be able to have any health insurance at all? The consequences of this failure of the for-profit health system have been borne by American taxpayers and American patients. The majority of Americans are now feeling that it's high time for some impatience. So do you agree that we really have to make some changes to avoid the coming catastrophe? Yeah, I guess you're right. There really is no choice. We have to do something so people can still afford health insurance. So tell me, exactly what changes would you like to see? Well, I think it needs to cost a lot less than it does now, I mean, to really be affordable. And coverage shouldn't depend on employment status or health status or age. And it should be there anytime, anywhere it's needed. And the medical staff should be fully licensed. Facilities should be high quality. And I need freedom of choice of any doctor or clinic or hospital. And I think it's important for it to cover everything including prescriptions and dental and vision, long-term care, you know, everything. You might be surprised to know that the universal single-payer system we're advocating would do all these things and more. Most of these things already exist in traditional Medicare and in some other government-funded systems. By contrast, the private health industry has failed miserably in almost all these categories, even though they've made ours the most expensive health care system in the world. Let's take a look at what a single-payer system would provide. First, over the last 20 years, the Congressional Budgeting Office, the General Accounting Office, and Independents have repeatedly analyzed the financial aspects of switching to a single-payer system. Every time, results have shown that switching to a nationwide single-payer system would cover everybody with fully comprehensive benefits and still produce a substantial net savings. Single-payer would also greatly simplify the system and make it much easier for everyone to see exactly where the money is going. It's a really simple concept. It just makes the government the insurer, which means the insurer answers to us, the voters and taxpayers, not to private investors. Doctors and all providers bill the government directly, so there is no patient involvement in billing or collecting at all. Oh, so I wouldn't have to deal with any of that paperwork or annual enrollment stuff. And that's exactly right. And since there is only one payer, there is no need for doctors to pay large clerical staffs 
to deal with billing. But wouldn't the doctors be working for the government? No. All doctors and other providers remain private. They do not become employees of the government. Only the billing and collecting are changed. Okay. Would I be able to keep the doctor I have now? Yes. You would be completely free to choose any doctor or other provider in the country. But who decides what treatment I can get? I mean, the doctor would still have to ask the government, right? No. Treatment decisions are left up to the doctor in consultation with the patient. Government bureaucrats would have no say in your treatment decisions. And coverage is truly comprehensive. Now, let's go down that list of changes you want one at a time. The first thing on your list was affordability. The current cost of our health care system is enormous. It's now $2.4 trillion. That's about $7,900 per person and growing exponentially, doubling every seven years. That does sound like a lot. But you said it's the largest in the world? Well, unfortunately, that's right. Other similar democracies are paying a lot less per person and as a percentage of gross domestic product. In fact, our per capita cost is 40% higher than any other nation and two or three times higher when compared with the other industrialized nations. The major difference is they have single-payer systems. Really? Would you like to see where a huge chunk of your premium money goes right now? Hmm, let me guess. You just happen to have a chart handy? How'd you guess? Here you can see that it's not to doctors. That's the little blue sliver at the bottom. Sadly, the answer is right here. The enormous growth in our health care costs is mostly due to the number of administrative personnel required by the for-profit insurance companies. That is truly an astounding amount. Calculating the hourly rate for CEO Ronald Williams of Aetna, it shows he makes over $11,000 every hour in base salary alone, plus another $32.8 million a year in stock options and retirement. How many surgeries and chemotherapy sessions would that pay for? Meanwhile, people are literally dying from inability to buy the health coverage these CEOs and their companies are supposed to be providing for Americans, and that's just wrong. I'm afraid I do have to agree with you on that. There are many other ways money from premiums is used by the private industry for things that don't provide medical services. You can see some of them here. Note that the total percentage shown here does not include the additional billing costs that doctors, hospitals, and other providers have to spend to hire and maintain huge clerical staffs just to build the enormous numbers of private companies, each with its own set of complicated forms and rules. So your doctor is faced with a nasty choice. Is the extra cost passed on to you, or is the loss made up for by seeing a greater number of patients per day, which means less time to spend with each patient? Now you tell me. Is this any way to run a health care system? I gotta admit, you do have a point there. I just hate those 15-minute mini-sessions that we get now. There used to be time to actually talk with a doctor, but now there's never enough time to deal with more than one or two things, no matter how many medical problems you may have. This bar chart directly compares the efficiency of private insurers with a traditional Medicare system, which has been in operation for more than 60 years and devotes 97% of income directly to providing health care. So, is Medicare already a single-payer system? Yes, traditional Medicare is, and universal single-payer is a health care system that would provide an improved, expanded traditional Medicare for every American. Improved, meaning even more cost-effective than current Medicare. Expanded, meaning more comprehensive coverage than now and coverage for every American. Okay, I'm starting to understand.